Hi, my name is Rick McCoy. I am 41 years old and a California native. I'm also a residential electrician by trade. Um, I am also, in part time, a LARP advocate and have been involved in the live action role play hobby since 1989. Uh, I'm putting forth my name to be a possible host for the show Pimp by a LARP. Um, and my rationale, of course, is because I have a very large body of knowledge. I am an expert in most aspects of, of the game functions, and I'm also a historian. I've been following the hobby f for the past 23 years. Um, I know an awful lot. The other thing that I have uh, this is of, of use is the fact that I also know what LARPs are lacking in terms of what can make them a better game, what can make it a better community for, for LARPs across America. Um, part of that is, of course, the, the fact that um, each LARP is sort of self-contained. It doesn't necessarily coexist with the others, even though they have a common origin point. So being able to talk to a LARP, making sure that you're not coming across the wrong way, that they're not getting in any negativity off of you, that you're trying to do the best that you can, to make their game better is really what I would try to focus on. Um, the other things that I could uh, also bring bring into um, focus is the actual history of LARP, and I think this is a very important facet of it because a lot of LARPs actually aren't aware of the, the common history that they have and uh, how closely related they are. So that would be something I think I could bring up. Hi, my name is Rick McCoy. I am the director of the Foam Smith Skill for the LARP Alliance. I also build and make foam weapons for the LARP hobby here in America. This is my shop. Uh, please take a look around. Now this is a converted uh, two-car garage. I've tried to build my workspaces so that I have most of my big foam up on top to keep it out of the way. Um, and then I have four different workstations uh, that have various functions throughout the place. This area right here is my main tool kiosk. That's where I keep all the big tools. Um, you'll note that most of the tools might seem familiar, especially if you are working with wood. And, uh, but working with wood and working with foam is very, very similar on many, many counts. Now this area right here is my paint kiosk. It has a little bit of everything in there. I've got some acrylic paints. Some enamel, other things like that. Um, this is where I go to be able to figure out how I'm going to paint something. Over here, my little laptop where I do my uh, accounting research, things like that. And there's my sewing machine, call it the Beast. It's an industrial size sewing machine. Um, sounds like a proton accelerator when you turn it on. You know, all the power dims and everything like that. But this is where we sew all our cloth covers. There's actually a couple of cloth covers that are being sewn in progress. Now over here, I wanted to go over some of the basics on how these weapons actually came about and how they work. Um, I've got a small little array here of what we call boffer swords. A boffer sword is basically PVC core with pipe insulation covered with duct tape. Things that you can get from like Home Depot or Ace Hardware. Uh, very easy to find, very easy to repair on the field. Um, you're also able to throw on a bit of what we call open cell foam, kind of the, the foam that might be in your uh, couch cushion to blunt the blow of, the, of a thrust, and we call this a thrusting tip. Um, boffer swords have been around for a very long time. They started being used in the late 70s, and they still really have not really evolved much. <clears throat> These are a pair of boffer swords, this one and this one in particular, that were built last year by a gentleman who's trying to actually make a living selling them. And you can kind of see there's a little bit more stylized approach to it. They're a little prettier than something like this. A bit of a curvature right here, but it's still, at the end of the day, foam covered with duct tape. Now, I was fortunate when I got into the hobby in that I played in a game called the IFGS. And one particular uh, fellow named Chris Frem became my uh, mentor in building foam weapons. He it showed me a way of building a weapon that was very unique and very different from everything I've seen so far. This is what we call a layer construction or sandwich construction. And you can kind of see how it's arranged over the core. The core, this is a very old sword, is bamboo. Uh, we don't usually use bamboo anymore, but bamboo is actually a nice core if you can find a nice piece. Uh, we use fiberglass, we use hollow rod, carbon fiber rods, things like that. So using this philosophy, you might be able to add a little bit of art to it. 
These weapons, for instance, are the same construction. They just have a lot more detail to them, uh, a lot of artistry that's involved to it, but it's essentially the same sort of blade. This is still open cell cush on the top. So with a little bit of two-dimensional art design, you might be able to bring something to life. So it's, it's a sort of a design process. Um, being able to take that and turn it into a work of art and turning a LARP environment into something incredible and detailed and wonderful makes that game much more immersive and makes it much more believable to the players and to the people who are participating in it. Um, there are different types of coatings for the, not, for the more modern weapons that we make. For instance, this is a chemical coating, similar to latex. So you can make the blade look metallic if you like. Also, here is the hybrid version of the same sword with the open cell thrust tip. I just need to build a, soft cl a, a cloth cover for it. So these are twins and in, in, in identically in, in shape and the design and function, except that one is coated and one is not. This is an example of a hammer with open cell, um, and it's got the other parts. We call this, in this type of building, a hybrid. A hybrid allows a weapon to be built that is far safer and can be used in more LARPs than these coated ones, which the coated ones were created mostly in Europe in the uh, early 80s. And here I have a weapon that uh, is pretty much the design that I teach my students how to make uh, on the classes that I run on a monthly basis. This kind of weapon is a uh, sandwich design, same as that, and I teach a lot of philosophy. It's like an eight-hour course, and I'm trying to hammer into their head that they can be an artist and transform it into something quite different from just this very simple blade. Um, I've had great success. I've had amazing students, and I think that there's a lot of weapons here in Southern California that are in use and played and used in LARPs today because of the classes that I teach. Now the uh, the end result can be quite stunning if you're very good at what you do. This is a multi-layered shield. It's completely made out of foam. It doesn't have a core in it and it, it holds its shape uh, by way of how the foam was cut and it's been coated and very resilient. It's seen two years of worth of use and it's held up pretty well. This is a staff, a sling staff. See the, the, uh, the carvings in it? It's not extremely exquisite detail, but you don't really need a lot of detail to get the overall impression of how it is. Add a little leather work, little, little, a little trim to it, and it really brings it alive. Um, here is a custom piece. This is my favorite. This is my two-handed sword for a character that I play. It was also in the movie Knights of Bad Astem and used by one of the main characters there. This piece right here, this solid head, this dragon's head, was carved from a single piece of foam. It also has a thrust tip. It's seen better days, but really all it needs is a, a new cloth cover and it'll be good as new. This is another piece right here. Another custom sword. It's called Deathmaker. Um, hand and a half. It's got a balance thing right here so that the, the balance of the weapon is right about there. It's got a thrust tip and it's also got a little bit of art on the actual cover to show you how you could do, you know, add a little bit more um, detail even with the cloth cover. Another example of good uh, artistry using cloth, uh, a fire blade having the layered cloth and the overall effect is, is, is quite stunning. This is a simple piece, which looks kind of cool. Again, we built this for the movie Nice of Bad Astem. Um, and this is pretty much just real thin foam cut out in the shape, painted on, layered on, cut, made gouged like it's actually been through combat and things like that, but it's completely made out of foam. And this is, of course, open cell. So if you get hit by it, it doesn't hurt at all. Well, hopefully today I've given you a glimpse at my skill at working with foam and the high level of detail and artistry that can be incorporated into these fine weapons and props. I look forward to being part of the show. This is Rick McCoy, signing off. So we meet on the battlefield. So Robert just told you just to hold it? He's fighting. Oh. Apparently this is baby Dante. Right. Uh, it's cute. <laughs> See? He has a dog. <laughs> I've got to go babysitting now. Alright, alright.